Good morning, fighters. How you guys doing? Good morning. Uh, beautiful day here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I uh, hope all of you guys had a blessed weekend. Uh, praise God for another beautiful day. This is the day that He has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, praise God. What a what an amazing weekend. Uh, it's time to just start from square one. Happy Monday, everybody, and let's just press forward in the week uh, and hit that grind, you know. And I want to encourage you guys, wherever you're listening to, uh, um, when you listen to this podcast, if you're at work, if you're at school, I really appreciate you guys. I had a few people that reach out to me to tell me that they enjoy the show. That really encourages me and gives me more of a inspiration to keep going. So please uh, let me know how you like the show. Uh, please like and share, comment, whatever you want to do. But I really feel that there's... Uh, a big need in the MMA community for Jesus, you know, like uh, for everyone who enjoys UFC fights, um, you know, we should get the name of Jesus into that culture and really implement the gospel, you know, and to lead people to Jesus and save souls to encourage one another, you know. Uh, so it's all good, all all motivation, inspiration, just hopefully we can get some encouragement across somebody's path every single day through the podcast or on YouTube uh, on Facebook, wherever we can do it, we're going to hit them on all platforms and share that Jesus loves them. Amen. So uh, what's been on my heart lately, um, dude, it's um, I just noticed uh, as of late, not so much now, but uh, lately, especially with uh, Trump in office, I just feel there's a lot of people who are like political social media experts now. And um and I feel there's a lot of there's like a, there's a heavy layer of opinion now over social media. You notice that people are more bold to speak. Like even people that were super shy before, now they're like now they speak their mind more and like kind of dare someone to challenge them. And like I don't know. So so I just feel that um, with me personally, I never get offended at nobody. Like we all have the free. The freedom of, of free speech. We all have a free will to believe what we want and to have our, our the views that we want. Whatever, you know, that yes, we're all adults and that's your choice, you know. And I support your choice because you have the, the legal right to have that choice. You know what I mean? So even though you may not believe the same as me or uh, vote the same as me, I don't care. I'm still going to love you just because you're a human being. And... Um, and I'm going to respect you just because. Because uh, there's an old saying like, you know, don't respect nobody until they give you a reason to. Until they got to earn your respect. For me, not really. You know, like, like we're all God's children and we all like, we're, we all need love and we should be loving one another. So how about I'm going to respect you no matter what your views are or your opinions are, no matter what your belief, your background, whatever. I'm going to choose to love and respect you. And but if you do something to lose my respect, then I'm just gonna love you from a distance. You know what I mean? So that's that's my opinion. And so I'm, I have some scriptures here to uh, to encourage that fact of just loving on people. You know, just to I think that we should be more focused on not getting offended and stop having these guards up against what people say and just just hear people out. Just to just to love on one another. And because it's the love of God, the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. It's not pointing out someone's faults or sins or whatever. No, Jesus loved on people and he healed people. He, he prayed for people. He encouraged people. And that's what we're here to do, to be like Jesus and to win souls of the lost, right? And to lead them to salvation and to heal the brokenhearted and to cast out devils if they're being oppressed, you know, like, and just be, and just be on a real level with people and not so religious and unapproachable, you know? So, um, don't get offended, hear people out, you know? And, and I realized too, like, um, I saw, uh, there was, I forgot which comedian, but there was a very funny video that I saw and it was like, uh, like a lot of off color jokes or very bold and, or even like, a. You know, it was funny, but it's not something you would necessarily hear in a church, right? But I found it funny. So I commented on it because there's a whole lot of people getting offended. It was it was Bill Burr, actually. You know Bill Burr. If you know him, he's very 
Uh, he, he's from Boston, he's really bold, and he likes to just tell it as it is. That's his personality, right? So a lot of people get easily offended at Bill because of how he is. He is very in your face, not much of a filter. He's just gonna say what comes to his mind, and that's what he's known for, right? But uh, I, as I read the comments, because I, I was gonna comment how funny that was, but reading all the comments, I just realized like, man, like everybody gets so butthurt so quickly. And um, not knowing that this guy is a comedian and 99% of what he's saying is just satire. You know what I mean? And it's just, he's just there to make you laugh. Even if he has like dark humor, he's like, he's pushing that envelope because like comedians are like the, the, like the ultimate form of free speech. You know what I mean? And they're going to challenge you to, to just like see how uptight you are. You know, that's the way I see it anyway. But, uh, yeah, just, so let's just walk in our daily walk with Jesus and not be so offended at everyone, especially those who don't believe the same thing as you and just love on them, you know, and to just work on ourselves, you know, and not be so focused on what everyone else is dealing with, but let's just let the Lord work on our own salvation and change ourselves so we can love others as he loved him, as he loved them. Amen. Right. So if you got your Bibles, uh, I'm, lo I'm looking in uh, the book of Luke chapter six. And uh, just like I said last time, you know, uh, read this for yourself. Right. I started working with the youth again um, at Thy Word Ministries and they had a lot of questions, as you would assume. But um, I told them to, even though I have some answers, I don't have all the answers. This has the answer. Jesus is the answer, right? And so, you know, like I said last episode, just to recap, don't take what anyone says as gospel. Just be encouraged and double check. Make sure that it lines up with the word of God, you know? And uh, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then it's not of God. Simple, you know? Because uh, let me let me break this down real quick. Is how when the word, it says that the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it separates between soul and spirit, okay? So what's the difference between your soul and your spirit? As I told the youth on Friday, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion, okay? That's what the Bible says. That's what it says, what the soul is. But your spirit is not the same thing. Your everlasting spirit is that that real you, that that one that that is going to be living for eternity. Not this flesh, not this body, not this house, but your everlasting spirit, right? And um, so that's the difference. So, so your soul, your mind, your will, and emotion can change, right? With your opinion, with your upbringing, with your, uh, with your attitude, right? All that your mind, your will, and your emotion can vary and and uh, and differ with the times. But your everlasting spirit is born again. It's alive unto God, and that's the real you. And that's not going anywhere, right? Uh, so the reason I say that is because when you hear things like from a pastor or from anyone off the street or someone telling you what they believe, you know, the word is sharp enough to divide whether it is of the spirit and it's of the Holy Spirit of God or if it's part of their soul and it's their opinion, it's their view it's there you know so so if i were to tell you something that sounds really good and nice is that necessarily of god right how do we know you got to line up with the word of god and this is what's going to be your filter for your whole life this is going to be your filter and your sword to divide what is truth and what is not what is flesh what is carnal or what is of the spirit and what is truth what what like what am, am I going through? I'm having voices in my head. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's the devil. I don't know if it's me. Forget all that confusion. Does it line with the word? It's God, period, right? So that's why you're going to have to study this and learn, you know? So hopefully that can give some clarity, okay? Because that is part of the topic what I'm about to bring up in Luke chapter 6, okay? So Luke chapter 6, and I'm just going to read down from verse 27, okay? So it says uh, in chapter 6, verse 27, it says, But I say to you uh, who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you, 
So to he who strikes you on the cheek, offer him the other one also. And from him who takes away your cloak, don't withhold your tunic either. So give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. And just as you want men to do unto you, do unto them likewise. And so, but if you do love those who already love you, so what credit is that? Uh, for even sinners love those who love them, right? So if you do good to only do good to you, uh, verse 33, even sinners do the same. So the verse 34, if you lend to those who you hope to receive something back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners and do the same. So uh, verse 35, but love your enemies and do good to lend and hoping for nothing in return. So your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Man, that's deep. Uh, so just therefore be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Okay? So you want to be a son of God and you want to be a child of the Most High. He said that he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Woo! Right? So so what is that all talking about? So if you're, if you're not necessarily a Christian and you heard that, What's the first thing that you're going to think of, like, like for real? If I was not a Christian and I was hearing that, I'd be thinking, man, I, Christians are a bunch of pushovers, right? That's the first thing that you would think of because it's saying, you know, if he hits you on the cheek, offer the other one. If they steal a cloak from you, don't forget to give them your shirt, your tunic, right? Or uh, if, if you let them borrow something, don't expect something back in interest. Like, don't hound them to get it back, like... What kind of life is that? The whole gist of the, what's going on here in the, in, the, in the scripture, in that context of that chapter, it's about, it's about just loving them, you know? Like, the, the, having the freedom to be able to love someone that hates you, that comes from God, right? So, what, because just like it was saying, why would you love someone who hates you? Why would you pray for someone who's always cursing you? Why would you bless them? right? It's because he first showed love to us and we didn't deserve it. So if someone is saying something offensive to you, why don't you just hear them out? And even if you don't agree, you are, you should be able to get food for thought, be able to like, oh, wow, that's an interesting view. I don't necessarily believe in that, but yeah, I can see, I can understand where you're coming from. Why not make the conversation? Why is it so difficult to just hear people out nowadays? You know what I mean? It's it's just something that I think that this society nowadays is lacking. Everyone is so bold and so um, on what they believe is that they're so close-minded and narrow-minded that if you do that, you're only going to reach people who think like you, right? So so why don't we, if because if we believe in this, do you believe in the Bible? Do you really believe it in it though? Like do you, do you think this is the ultimate truth? Is this the ultimate truth? Then if it is, then you have nothing to worry about. What are you worried about for? Like, are you scared of someone coming to you and try, like trying to stump you or something? Like, if they try to have like a deep statistic about Christianity or like something that's like, like off the wall and catches you off guard and you know what to say, that's fine. It doesn't change who God is. It doesn't change who you are. Is is this? They just cut you off guard. Like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to get some ice cream, man. I'm not trying to fight. You know, like whatever. You know, whatever. It's uh, life doesn't have to be a debate. That's all I'm saying is that you should just love those who you come across, and it doesn't mean you go the extra mile and give them all the money in your pocket every time you see a stranger. Use wisdom, but I'm saying that we we should be able to hear people out. We should be able to not be offended when you go out there today. Just Spend time, before you go out, spend time with your Heavenly Father, right? And you become who you hang out with. So if you hang out with your Heavenly Father every day, every morning, you become more like Him. You get in the Word every day, and you're just letting this clean your mind from all the uh, evil or uh, negative thoughts, impure thoughts, uh, doubtful thoughts, whatever. Just get the mind of Christ in you. 
Let, let, let the word of God be that sword that divides. Okay, am I going to think about the spirit? Or are these thoughts more about my mind, my will, my emotion, my carnal flesh, whatever? If it's doing, like, if it's in that topic, then, if it's in that topic, then we don't need any part of that. We can be in the spirit. Because when you walk in the spirit, you're walking with God. And you're following him. You can hear his voice clearer. You know, the air is sweeter. You know, you're walking with him. And you're doing things with him, not just trying to live for him. You know, so so it's not that hard. You know, Christianity is just supposed to be a love walk, you know, and I told this to the youth, too, is that, you know, people tend to tend to just overcomplicate Christianity and it's not about uh, don't smoke cigarettes, don't drink, don't do this, don't do that, don't stay up late, don't this, don't, 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 don't. No, it's not about a bunch of rules. You know, because that that Ten Commandments and, you know, like I'm not saying you don't have to uh, you don't have to abide by them or you don't you don't have to acknowledge them, whatever. No, but but what did Jesus say when they asked him about which one is the greatest commandment of them all? He gave them two brand new ones. It's not about what uh, thou should not do this and thou should not do that. First one, he said, is just just to love God with all your heart and soul and your mind. Just just love God with all your strength. Just love God. That's number one. And number two, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's Christianity, my, my dudes. That's Christianity. No, no complication here. It's because if you were in that situation, just like we were reading in Luke, if, if you needed a loan or if you needed someone to help you out, wouldn't you want someone to help you out? Or if you were in a tough spot, and you have no groceries in your fridge or you got no money for your rent, wouldn't you like somebody to help you out with that? Love others as you love yourself. Do unto others as you want done unto you. It's peop, uh, The world calls it karma, but no, man, you're just reaping what you're sowing. You're just, doing, you're just giving unto others as you want done unto you. And love... That, that's why love is the fulfillment of the law. With the law and the regulations and the rules and the rituals and the religion. Jesus don't like religion. He wants a relationship, bro. He wants to walk with you. He wants to be real. Like, I mean, I understand if we're new creatures in Christ Jesus and you just become born again. Like, our initial reaction is to be a little bit religious. And that's cool. Sometimes we fall into that. But it's not, it's not necessarily wrong. But, um... Isn't it easier just to walk with Jesus instead of walking according to the word, like trying to not mess up and not trying to sin and not trying to do this? No, like the only reason we have the Bible is so we can learn. It's just so we can learn how to walk with him, how to think like him, how to speak like him, how to act like him. And you learn who you are in Christ. You learn about what he has done for you. you just the learning never stops. And that's what you want to learn. If you really love your father and you really love God, you're going to spend time with him. You're going to take that time in the morning to just do your devotion, to just spend time in his presence, right? And so hopefully that can encourage you guys to make make a friend today. Make a friend that doesn't necessarily go to your church or um, start a conversation with a stranger today that you wouldn't normally talk to just because of the way they look or whatever. It's... Love those, man. Even if they curse you to your face, it's okay. Jesus is still on the throne. You're still a child of the Most High God. He's still on the inside of you. So why don't you just go out there and love on them in the name of Jesus. So he gets the glory. And so one day they could possibly come to know him as Lord and Savior. Right? So for all the people who are watching and you don't know what that means. And what is this Jesus stuff? Why should I love? Like what is this... What is this podcast? What, what are you doing? This is all about Jesus, man. Um, we, may, we may may talk about MMA. We may talk about fighting, UFC, whatever, food. I don't know. But I do know this is that one thing consistent that it's Jesus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he loves you. Whether if you think you're a sinner or whether you've been going to church for 25 years, we are still in the same boat. We are all born into sin. We, none of us are perfect. But um, 
we, we get caught up in the thought of thinking we have a sin problem. And we're thinking that, you know, we'll never reach God. But you know what? It's okay. It, it's, it's no problem because Jesus took the time to come down to, to pay the price for your sin and to just, so you can have the ex access to the throne of grace, so you can have access to your heavenly father. There's no sin problem anymore. He loves you and he paid the price for your sin. And he died on the cross and he rose again on the third day. He loves you. I pray that you get to know him. If you want to get to know Jesus, just come and just uh, pray with me. Just close your eyes and just believe and have faith and say this and say, Jesus, I need you. I love you. And I believe you died for me. And you rose again on the third day. So come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Clean me, wash me from all my sin, and I am free forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You pray that, pray something pretty like that, and you mean it, and you believe it, and you receive it. Guess what, man? You got salvation, and you are forever free. Jesus is the Lord of your life. Jesus came on the inside of you, and get to know him. You become who you hang out with. So let's spend time with more with Jesus. And uh, hopefully we can love those who don't necessarily love us. Uh, but uh, let's spend more time not getting offended. But uh, let's spend more time just loving on everyone. And just walking in love. And remember that joy of the Lord is your strength. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And uh, remember to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. God bless you guys and take care. I'll see you next time.